Hello everybody, Charlie here. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. Giovanni has joined the Minmus crew as a scientist, and he is going to be coming into this little pod here to help them with agroponics, getting food, all that good stuff. We need that stuff because we're running out. Uh, well, at least we were running out until I just now brought uh, this little craft here up to the surface of Minmus, and it brought some colony supplies, or not colony supplies, it brought some supplies for them to eat, because they need to eat, they were running out of food. So, that's done, just letting you know. We're gonna break that vessel down, and then I am gonna time accelerate from there. Uh, we're gonna time accelerate to about, about 60 days into the future, so that we can finally do this Duna, uh, this Duna craft. We're gonna get that Duna probe down to the surface in this episode, I'm pretty excited about that. Let me double check really quick and make sure... Actually, I think the root part is up there, so I should be able to break this down. Yeah, no issues there. I could probably detach this because we no longer need it. I think... Let me double check this really quick. I took the, the supplies and I transferred it into... Oops, this is the wrong module. I transferred it into this module here, so we should have supplies in there as well as some supplies right there. And that should hold them off for a while, while they work on uh, making fertilizer. So that's what they're doing here. I'm actually going to take this off of fertilizer, or let's take this off of uh, metals. I think we have enough metals for now. Metallic ore is way up, so like we have enough to make the metals, but uh, maybe we take it off of polymers instead. Where is polymers? Here it is. Thing is, something else can make polymers. Like, I have other things that can make polymers, but I don't have anything else that can make... Hmm. I'm gonna stop the polymers. And we're gonna, we're gonna reconfigure that. But I think we're good here. There's no more supplies in this, right? No. So that's fine. There's some fuel in here we could transfer. It's worth doing, I suppose. So we'll take and just get all that fuel out of there. And then we're good to go. And it comes crashing down to the surface, but that's okay because we're going to disassemble all of it. Woo! Good work, Shane. And that craft is eliminated. So we have a whole bunch of material kits from that, which is good. Now I'm going to get Shane back in this, and we're going to time accelerate while this base is in view because it's going to be about 60 days until that craft gets there. And while we're sitting here for 60 days, we might as well be making a whole bunch of material kits. And I think we're gonna see, I don't know this, but I think we're gonna see a pretty good stream of production happening here. Oh, wait, hey, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we do that though, let me make sure we're making the fertilizer. And come over here and let's change the configuration on the polymers. Okay, Shane's back in the base now, and we can see that these modules are now doing agroponics, which hopefully means we're having some sort of supply uh, production. That's what I'm hoping anyway. We're going to start agroponics here too. 100% load. Fantastic. Okay, so with fertilizer being a thing that we're making in here, this whole thing is making fertilizer pretty quick now, I would hope. Let's go ahead and time accelerate, and you can see the material kits right here. So this is, I'll leave these meters on so you can see them. It should only be filling up these two containers, not this one over here. So are we ready, folks? <laughs> time accelerate, or sorry, uh, let's quick save just to make sure nothing crackety happens, and let's go. Ramp it up. All right, I'm noticing something here about this. Um, it, it stopped it stopped producing a lot of things, and I, I'm learning as I go, right? I don't know everything about this game, obviously, uh, and I'm learning as I go, and I'm seeing a lot of these tanks are at 4,000 out of 4,000, and the drills are saying they're full, and I'm gonna start trying to use the planetary logistics. I've been using local logistics quite a bit. I understand that part. It's the infinite storage in the planet that I keep forgetting about, and so we can have things like Right now, I just turned on the gypsum tank for it, and there's 950 stored planetary wide, which means that when we run out of resources here, we'll start pulling from the planetary supply, and there's like infinite storage in the planetary logistics. So um, what I could do is c come to something that's full, like minerals, for example, and if I can find, like here's metals, but I don't want metals. How about metallic ore? So metallic ore uh, was getting full. I'm gonna turn it into planetary logistics. 
and we should never see metallic ore full again because as soon as this tank gets full it'll start dumping it into the planetary side so here's silicates silicates is here i could turn this on you'll see the supply drops to half but really it's just depositing it into the planetary logistics so if i go to here we should see silicates has now has 950 in there and gypsum's already up to 1425 so as we get more resources that don't need to fit in the tanks it starts offloading them to planetary logistics. And so all of this stuff, like dirt, for example, is a big one, like dirt. There's no reason to have this much dirt stored, honestly. So um, it's my it's my mistake. The way I designed these things was all based on the fact that I had to have it local, right? So if I do this, now we've got 8,000 dirt just stored and the drills can keep working now. They can keep storing things. Not that we actually need that much dirt, but it can now start to store it planet side. So minerals and substrates are the other ones I need to do. So minerals are here. You can do this right here. We'll say planetary. And really I only need one tank to be planetary because like it, it's gonna store it in the, all the access gets stored anyway. So both tanks don't need to be that way. You just need one tank that way basically. So, uh, so we'll go to substrates and we'll just say that this one here is planetary. Okay, now you might be wondering, why is he spending all this time running us through all this stuff? Well, I'm not actually, like, wasting time. We're running time accelerations so that we can get closer to our alarm. And here it is, our specialty launch. This uh, pop-up here is about 30 seconds old now. And we managed to make a lot. We're almost up to 20,000 material kits. So, very, very cool base. Let's go ahead and jump to the ship. All right, so here we are, my nice little package I've got coming to Duna. Let's take a look at the map really quick. Zoom out, whoa, okay, cool. Uh, so it's coming around like this, and it's gonna get itself into a nice little orbit like this, a little bit inclined. I want the flexibility to be able to get into the biome that I wanna get into. Now we have uh, 1,693 meters per second of Delta V in the craft. It's gonna take us uh, three, uh, 613 to produce this maneuver. So we have extra fuel. I'm actually thinking I wanna go a little bit more extreme here if I can. If I can pull this in just a bit more. Uh, see, now that gives me periapsis into the atmosphere, which is not a big deal per se, but I think I'm better off being just outside the atmosphere. So let's pull ourselves back out to, uh, let's do like 40.6. It is 40,000, right? The atmosphere might be 45,000. Let's pull it out to 45,000 just to make sure. 50 second delay now, it's getting worse. <laughs> it's getting even further away. And this 50 second delay, that's with that's with Duna being right here relative to Kerbin. Like that's not even the furthest possible distance, right? Kerbin's gonna keep going around. This delay might get to three minutes or so, like two minutes. I don't really know where it's gonna be, but it's gonna get well over a minute for sure. Oh man, it's so good to be around Duna. Isn't it good to finally be like away from Kerbin's sphere of influence with this campaign? This career mode stuff, it really slows you down. It really, I mean, it's got to. I mean, space is not gonna be something that you do quickly, especially if you're starting from scratch. And we are golden. Wonderful, well done, flight computer, thank you. So, where do we wanna land, right? Where do we want to land? Let's open up the big map. All right, everybody, so as you know, we've had satellites around Juno for quite some time now, and we have all the details we'll ever need about it. So we can see biome information and all that stuff. So I have the overlay turned on. You can kind of see Duna looks a little funny behind me. I've got the overlay turned on and I found a spot I want to land this craft. And it is right here, which if we zoom in, you get this map. So since this map is kind of too big, kind of in the way, let's look at this map. So this is where I want to land this craft. Okay. Now I want to land it here because it's, it's really close to a whole bunch of different biomes. And what we get is something that looks a little bit like this. We get the Midlands is this green area here, which is kind of where I'm aiming for. We have the Highlands here. Uh, now I would aim for the Highlands, but there's a better, there's like a greater chance that we're going to run into a hill there. Although it kind of makes more sense to aim for the Highlands. I don't know. We'll aim a little, we'll aim a little further south from this point and see what we get. You know, maybe we'll hit it, maybe we won't. But we have the Highlands, the Midlands, and then this little sliver right here is the Lowlands, as well as this right here is also the Lowlands. We have the Western Canyon right here. 
and we have the northern basin right here. So a lot of really cool biomes, but we also have, in addition to the northern basin, the western canyon, we also have this little tiny sliver here that's the eastern canyon. Little tiny sliver here, that's the eastern canyon. So we have a lot of biomes right here, and this is a great spot to land because our payload uh, would very much appreciate it if we were near a bunch of different biomes. So we're going to go ahead and set up a landing. Now, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to lose connection with this craft or not. Uh, it's possible that we lose it. Also, we have some garbage collection and stuff making my thing skip. So if we happen to skip all of a sudden, uh, that's why. So right now I have a maneuver set up to get us to align our orbit uh, more precisely with this point. And I'm actually going to kind of maybe bring it down just a little bit more just so we can get maybe the highlands is a good idea. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but with this move maneuver in place, Kraft's going to go ahead and do that in four minutes and 28 seconds. We have a 50 second signal delay and I'm not entirely sure if we're going to keep our signal. I'm pretty confident in it because that's why we did the satellite network. But in the unfortunate and very unlikely event that we do lose our signal, I want to have all my commands set up ahead of time. We've done this before. If you want to see it done uh, around Kerbin, yeah, you can watch episode 11 of this series because episode 11 was pretty much dedicated to that, at least the beginning was. So let's get another maneuver right about here, let's say, in about 13 minutes from now. And we're just going to drag this to where it ends up being basically straight down. Yeah, that's probably good. Maybe we go just a hair this direction. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so this is where we want to sort of time all of our stuff relative to that point. And this point is in 12 minutes and 52 seconds. So all the stuff I want to time is relative to the 12 minutes and 52 seconds that it'll take us to get there. For now, though, let's get ourselves time accelerated so that we can get this maneuver taken care of because I think we're going to have plenty of time. With that being 12 minutes away, I think we're definitely going to have enough time. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to leave the biome overlay on so that we can see this because if I turn it off, what you get is basically pitch black darkness and I kind of want to know where I am. So we're going to turn this data on. And it makes sense because uh, we don't actually have a manned vessel here. It's it's remote. And so our vision of the surface wouldn't be like relative to a Kerbal's eyes, right? It would be relative to the data that we have. So we could position ourselves and know where we are. So it makes sense that we'd still be able to see it despite no sunlight. Uh, let's say this is probably pretty good, actually. I think we're right on the money here. So in... We want to we, we want to say execute the next maneuver. Now this gives us uh, this clock right here uh, is going to tell us when this is going to maneuver. So we want to do everything relative to that. So I'm going to say probably about here or so. Let's say in five minutes from now. Let's say five minutes from now. What I want to do is retract the whoops. <sighs> Click off of it, please. Off off. Thank you. I want to retract the solar panels. Actually, you know, we're on the dark side of this place right now anyway. So I don't think we're gonna, you know, it doesn't matter. We can actually do this with no delay. We can do this right now because it doesn't matter. Retract all the solar panels. Uh, then the maneuver is gonna happen in seven minutes and 35 seconds. So right after this maneuver, it's a 17 second burn. It takes 776 meters per second. We have 783, perfect. That's well, not perfect, but it's re it's really good. Um, so in about let's say seven minutes and let's say seven point five minutes, can I do that? L let me do that. Yeah, seven minutes and thirty seconds. So in seven minutes and thirty seconds, I want to decouple this because we don't need it, right? It's it's once it burns, we need to get rid of it. So I'm thinking probably the burn is done by now, right? Yeah, it's totally done by now. Let's let's go ahead and decouple that. Okay. So, as long as there's a 17 second difference between this burn time and this decouple time, we're solid there. Then, what I want to do is, see, it looks to me like my staging is messed up because this, I think I want to keep this. I think I want to keep this on. So if I go, let's switch these. Let's put these like this. Uh, then I'm going to have to probably hit stage twice because I messed with this so 
Let's say that uh, a minute after the burn it finishes. So let's say in about, well, right about now, seven and a half minutes from now, that's probably a good idea. Uh, we're gonna hit stage twice. So we're gonna go one, two, just to make sure that that pops. Okay, that's probably all we need to do to land this thing successfully. I'm hoping we land with, um, I ho I'm hoping that we're slow enough. I think I measured this out to where it would land with only this, but I think to help maybe make sure that we don't end up upside down, I'm gonna leave this on here because I think that'll help us not end up upside down. So what is the payload, right? I wasn't gonna show you guys this, but because of, we're gonna be flying through the atmosphere and I wanna take advantage of that. So I think rather than keeping this from you, oh, actually, instead of kill rotation, can we face maneuver, please? Can we get going? Uh, steadily like this. There we go. That's better. Perfect. I think since we're going to be flying through the atmosphere, I want to open this cargo bay and get access to some of the things I have in here. So let's open this and we'll take a look at what's inside. I th you guys probably already know what's inside. I mean, it makes sense. There's not a whole lot of things that would make sense aside from this. So I'm not really thinking that I'm, you know, not showing you what you probably don't already know. It's a rover and it's a really cool rover. I'm proud of it because I fit so much science equipment on this rover. We have basically every experiment possible as of building it, of course. Um, we don't have any goo because it's not like it's not reusable. So I didn't bother with that. We also have a gravity experiment we could do right now. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, it looks like when you enter time acceleration, it restores the camera. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, then. Are we in the atmosphere yet? No. Are we going to be in the atmosphere by the time that gravity thing goes off? No. So we're going to be good. Nice. Gravity experiment. Pop it. Got it. Good. How much power do we have? Plenty. When this engine burns, does it have an alternator on it? Yes, it does. Okay. So if we can, if we can send science before this thing burns or while it's burning, that would be really good, actually. Maybe we should prep this to go off right around uh, 45,000. How long will that take, do you think? How long will you think it'll take? I think we could probably safely do it now. Let's say perform all science, I think, right about... Yeah, we got 50 seconds for this, I think, right now. Let's perform all science. So if we perform all science now, we should be performing the science right around the time that the burn happens, right? Yeah, pretty much right with the burn, which hopefully means that we can start transmission while the engine is burning so we can preserve a lot of our electric charge. Basically, we can use the charge while we're already recharging. That's what I hope, hopefully want to do here. So let's see what we get. All the way down. And here we go. Boom, 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 all that. So electric charge is actually going up and down, which is what we wanted. We're, we're, we're transmitting, but we're also burning. It's fantastic. Saving as much power as possible. We don't need this alarm anymore. Okay, good. Transmission is still using up power, but that's expected. All right, and we get rid of that. Perfect. There's all of our experiments. Good to go. Done, done, and done. All right, so basically we're just toggling stages now. I really hope it doesn't, oh, I really hope that doesn't eject that. That's, oh, don't eject that at the same time though. That would be bad. Damn it, it did. Shit. <laughs> uh, it did. Well, at least we have this. I don't see why it would land upside down, but I mean, physics wise, you would think, why is this turning over right now? 
Like, what I don't, why is it going upside down? When the, see, the thing is physics, right? Let's analyze physics for a second. We have a ton of drag happening from this side, which means the parachutes are pulling this top section up, right? So this thing should not be oriented this way. This is totally bugged out right now. It should totally be oriented with the bottom down because the parachutes are on this side. I mean, that makes sense to me. So I, I don't see any problem with this. We should not we should not be flipping upside down here. It would it wouldn't make any sense if we did. Um, let's see what else can we run here. Is there anything? Just to help with that possibility, I think I'm also going to log magnetometer data. That will stick the magnetometer out. And um, because like it doesn't make sense that we, it would happen, but you know. This is KSP. <laughs> Things happen. So let's get the magnetometer to stick out, hopefully. Oh, or not. Let's just toggle it then. It's not going to let it out. Come on. Parachutes are away. Okay. Yeah, no, it's going to be fine because we're, 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 up, we're upright right now. This is good. Uh, let's extend the solar panels actually, because that will that will also help too with any ch any chance of roll if we extended it fast enough, which I'm not confident we did. There goes the magnetometer, solar panels. There we go. Okay, so that should help us with the roll possibility if if it's going to be a thing, which we're on a hill, so it might be. Ooh, we're on a hill. Might be a might be a thing. Ah, oh, keep it up. Oh yeah, look at that. It totally wanted to roll over. Look at that. Look at that. It still wants to roll over. What is going on with that physics? It's still trying to roll over. Look at that. Look at this stupidity. It is still trying to roll. It's got a flat edge, but it's still trying to roll. Wow. Wow. It's totally bugged, man. That's that's screwed up. How do I get this out of here then? I need to pull I need to, to go this way. I might be able to back it out, but I think it's gonna break something if I try to back this out of here. Hmm. Not sure what to do about it. We perform all science again while we're here. We don't have any sunlight for electric charge, so we're going to have to be... See, the atmospheric analysis, I think we need to reset that one. But the temperature scan we can send, the seismic scan we can send, um, pressure scan we can send, gravity scan we can send. But the other one, this analysis one... Um, come on. What is this nonsense? There's just no reason for this to ever want to sit like this. This is so silly. I'm really glad I put these out because that thing would have flipped over for sure. Come on now. There we go. We'll just let the physics do it. <laughs> Time accelerate really fast and then let the physics load correct it. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> I am quick saving that for sure. That is ridiculous. We are quick saving that. Physics needs to make sense in order for me to accept it, thanks. Uh, let's take this, and we can perform the science. We're fully charged again, so we can actually perform all science, I guess. We'll run this, and then we can do the surface scan as well. Uh, collect x-ray data. I guess we can try that. Look at that. We got the chem cam out. We're going to take some, some rock samples, right? Fire the laser. Collected science for Duna, right? Check the results. We got some, we got lights that are gonna turn on because I hit the wrong button, but that's okay. Probably want our lights on anyway, don't we? There we go, now we can see. Yes. Now we're gonna back out of this thing, so. If I can, I'm not sure if I can, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Check the results in the chem cam. And 37 science, man, 75 if we can get it, but we're going to transmit it. Because we can only use this once. This is not attached to the rover, it's, it's attached to the, the cargo bay, so. 
Probe Frenzy 3. Nice. Okay, I think we're ready to get out of here. So, we have a full battery, looks like. Pretty close. Let's see if we can just get our batteries full. Uh, it's actually getting close to nighttime on Duna for us, right? Oops, come on. Come on. There we go. Uh, where are we? Right here. We didn't land that far away from our point. It looks to me like we're sitting comfortably in the northern basin right now. And it also appears to me as though it's about to be nighttime for us. So what we could do is just let this go a day. Just let this go a day. And then, um, you know, come back in the morning. Good morning, everyone! Our probe is totally ready. We I could run this again to get some extra science, and so I'm gonna do that first, but our little guy here is totally ready to go. He's like, get, let me out of this stupid thing, and we are gonna let you out, don't worry. So, what I need to do here is I need to get my probe out, obviously. So, there's a couple of things to consider here. First thing to consider is um, the fact that we have to kind of drive a little uphill because the chem cam is in our way, but that's fine. Um, the second thing to consider is that we still have the signal delay, okay? That's still a thing. Even once we detach this, it's not like the signal delay is going to go away. We're still going to have it. So, uh, <laughs> 50 seconds, 51 seconds to get a signal. Uh, the third thing to consider is that this antenna is what we need in order to control this probe, and it is currently collapsed. And if I extend it, it's probably going to run into the cargo base. So here's what I'm going to do with this. This is the probe that's receiving all the commands. So as long as I can send it a command, it'll still do what it needs to do. So here's what we're going to do. I want to get a... It's 51 seconds, right? So I want to get, let's say, like a 65-second delay. Okay, minute five seconds, fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell this to extend. Then I'm gonna get rid of this delay and then tell this to go. And then once that goes, I'm gonna hit the accelerator and I'm hoping that this comes down. The, the hope is this comes down, this extends, and then the accelerator kicks it out the back, straight out the back. That's, that's the hope. So let's see how well that works. Ready, let's do it. So we're gonna go like this. Hit activate, get rid of the delay, zero, go. Let's decouple this, boom, and then hit the accelerator, bam. All right, now this is actually the back end of this, so um, we're gonna have to go backwards, so I'm hitting S on the keyboard right now to make it go backwards. The hope is it just comes right out the back. Now, since I've already held this down, I think long enough, I don't want it to go too fast, but I also need to make sure it gets out. So I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, release S, I think here. Yeah, I probably went too fast. And then I'm gonna hit the brakes, which is B. So let's hope that that actually happens. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, also, it's probably gonna switch. I think this is a root part. So I think it's probably gonna switch or it's not gonna switch to this, so I'm gonna have to manually switch crafts as well. So as soon as this undocks, I'm gonna have to do that. So here we go. Undocks, good. There's our probe, it has no connection. And it extends, we have connection, oh it goes, yay! It's going way too fast, it needs to hit the brakes. It needs to hit the brakes, oh shit. Hit the brakes, you got 12 seconds, oh my god, oh my god. I held it down for way too long, no. Hit the brakes, little guy, hit the brakes. Please hit the brakes, please hit the brakes. No, it's gonna flip, it's gonna flip. Oh my god, it's gonna flip, it's gonna flip, no! We're good, we're good, we're good. Nothing to see here, we're fine. <laughs> totally fine. I knew it was, I knew it all along. I had all the confidence in the world. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> definitely held the button way too long. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at some of these experiments we have, right? We've got this uh, core drill that's gonna go ahead and get samples. So I can, run, I can run a core drill sample check on this now. 
we have actually three of these, or no, sorry, two of these, right? Yeah, two of these. Two of these, now each of these collect surface samples. So eventually this probe needs to be collected by Kerbals. Uh, eventually I wanna take these samples back to, back to Kerbin to analyze them and get a full science value. Uh, but it's not really required. But it does get samples that each one of these things can collect three samples. So one, two, three. See, there's these little sample trays. And I've positioned these things so that these lasers and stuff will pop out right between all these solar panels and stuff. So they're never gonna, we're never gonna have any part clipping. At least we shouldn't have any part clipping. Then we have laser data. Same thing, we shouldn't have any part clipping when we do this because it should pop itself out and go right underneath the solar panels. That's the part I'm proud of is the positioning of everything. So um, not really the fact that I can fit it on there. So let's get this to run. Woohoo! Oh yeah. Gets the core drill sample, brings it back. I guess we got a little bit of clipping there, but we, you didn't see anything. 7.5 science is all we get for that. Uh, all right, well, we'll go ahead and transmit it, it's fine. Yep, there we go, probe fancy. Uh, the laser scan should now happen. Uh-huh, three, two, one, lasers, go. Shoo. Ducks right underneath the solar panel, and we got them, yeah. 30 science for that one, thank you very much, okay. Uh, we could do the surface, the system skip, yeah, we'll do this here. I don't know how that works. I know it opens up from the bottom here, though. Uh, wasn't there like a, another surface? I thought I had another surface experiment to run on the side here. Yeah, this right here, what's this? Collect the hydrogen data. And then there was, uh, like this, these, these things right here are fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, we could run, we could like run this right here. It's, yeah, it's, the garbage collection is running again. We could do this. This is the Northern Basin. Okay, let's keep track of our biomes information. Got it. How are we doing on power? You know what, we do gain power, but it's pretty damn slow. We might have to sit here a little bit, but, because we're sending all these experiments. X-ray data, yeah, it drops down into the surface. That's what that is. And do we get any data for that? Or do we have to, uh, there we go, 40 science for that. Thank you very much. Let's do a little of analysis. Whatever you're doing there, a hydrogen scan. We'll take that. Oh yeah. Our probe is on the surface. Now, where do we wanna go from here, right? Um, well, our landing spot was over here. We are currently in the northern basin. If we continuously head, if we continue to head east, we'll run into the Midlands and then eventually the Highlands. Uh, we could also hit go slightly to the south, I think. Or no, I think we just have to keep heading east. Actually, I'm looking at this hill right now, and I'm <laughs> I'm looking at this hill, and I have very little confidence <laughs> in this. Um, because we're going to be traveling downhill at very high speeds, most likely, I'm pretty sure this probe is not going to last if I let this thing go anymore. Uh, in fact, if it had gone even a little bit further, I think in this high speed pursuit out of the cargo bay, we probably would have had a huge problem. So I'm kind of thinking, like, how can I keep this under control with a 50 second delay? That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Can I, can I even keep it under control with a 50 second delay? I don't think I can. Let's see what happens if I release the brakes. Uh, and because it's a 50 second delay, I think I'm actually gonna re-engage the brake just in case it's out of control. So let's let this thing go for 10 seconds and then turn the brakes back on just to see what we're dealing with here. Cause I don't have confidence in this uh, at all. 30 seconds, 20, 10, okay. So we're gonna let go of the brakes right now and see what it does. It starts rolling immediately. Wow. Already up to one meter per second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say we can't make it down that hill. <laughs> Not going to happen. Unless I do this. What if I what if I inch it? Like hit the brakes, right? Go time acceleration a little bit. Hit the brakes again. That's too much. That's too much. Hit the brakes. Oh shit. How many times? How many times did I hit it? <gasps> no. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, we're engaged, right? This is this is disengaged, engaged, disengaged, engaged, disengaged, engaged, disengaged, engaged, disengaged, engaged. Okay, so we should be 
after this whole madness of breaks, I, I keep forgetting about the delay, people. <laughs> after this whole madness is over with, we should we should be engaged. I think the breaks should be engaged at this point. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, if they're not, though, we're totally screwed because it's going to take 50 seconds to stop if it's not. Totally screwed. All right, disengaged. We've got 10 seconds now. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. This is... Yeah, it's going to speed up pretty fast. Okay, good. So, yeah, that's a thing. I think maybe we could try this. If I disengage the brake... And let's wait like, let's wait like 10 seconds. Uh, okay, engage the brake again. It'll stop. Then we disengage the brake, wait another 10 seconds. So basically when this hits 40, we engage the brake again. Can we control the speed this way? Let's just let that settle. We'll, we'll let that stay engaged and let this settle. I don't know about this. What are our settings for the brakes? Front brakes, you know, the, the back brakes are supposed to be stronger than the front brakes, but the thing is, this thing is actually traveling backwards right now, and I would like it to travel the other direction. So I'm wondering, how do I even control that though? Because if I push the forward accelerator down, like, is it gonna go too fast the other way? I don't know how that's gonna work. Maybe we just accept that this is forward now? I don't know. Okay, we stop it, yep. And then it lets it go again. Yep. Oh, this is this is such a pain in the ass. There's no way I can do that. I am gonna wait until there are Kerbals in the area. Yeah, we're gonna wait till Kerbals are in the area. I don't wanna lose this thing. I think we're gonna leave it here. Um, I'm gonna leave the episode here as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We will continue with this probe. Uh, once we get Kerbals nearby, because the signal delay is crazy. And uh, this hill, like, that's not even very steep. Like, this is not very steep. This is where it gets steep. And I see us being, like, 20 or 30 meters per second just on a natural roll. Um, I need to be able to control this. I need to be able to control the acceleration in order to get down there. So I'm going to leave this episode here, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this uh, video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It's been a lot of fun. We had a little bit of a, a close call over there, but I think we're going to be good. So uh, I don't know what I'm doing for the next episode, but you will find out uh, next time. And so will I. Take care. Bye. Bye.